Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping into a brand new mod pack called Create Astral. And I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to journey through this mod pack. Getting started in this mod pack is kind of interesting. This mod pack starts you off with nothing, but you do get, uh, as you can see, shaders. Uh, so you get shaders packed definitely with this mod pack, which is pretty darn cool. Um, and uh, some texture packs and things like that. Now, there are some things that I do want to go over right off the bat, because I know you guys are going to definitely want to know this information. And that is how to change a few settings. So right off the bat, you notice that we have REI up here, which is a alternative to JEI. But up here is where the crafting grid is at. To change this, it's very important. Uh, if you want your search bar where it normally is down at the bottom, you go to more options, and then you can scroll down until you find layout, and then under layout, change this to bottom left, right, and then hit save. <laughs> and then you'll be back to normal. Uh, another thing that you might uh, be wondering how to do is how to bookmark items. As you can see, I'm bookmarking items. The default hotkey is F, and to change this hotkey, you go here under key binds in the same settings, and you scroll down to the favorite entry and just set that to A, because that's what it normally is in most mod packs. Other than that, that's just about it. If you're interested in uh, how to change some other things, uh, like your minimap, you can hit Y and you can turn your minimap on and off from here. So currently I have my minimap off and I have a hotkey set to J to be able to toggle my minimap on or off, which is very handy in a pack that is as beautiful as this one. Now this mod pack is full of cool things such as quests. Now the whole mod pack is really about uh, building uh, structures with create, automating with create, and uh, exploring space to further our progression, um, which is pretty cool to mix a space mod with a very interesting mechanical mod. Um, and to do that, everything is done through the quest book, as you can see here. One of our first quests is just to get a crafting table and we'll get a bed, which is super, super nice. Now, moving into what looks like Tinker's Construct, which is a Tinker's Construct, because we are in fabric. We're playing in a fabric mod pack here. Um, it's not called Tinker's. It's called Hephaestus. That's right. Hephaestus is a god that uh, is all about forge, right? Is a, is a forge uh, god, which kind of fits with, uh, with the Tinker's theme. So when I refer to Hephaestus, as you can see, it's also called T-Construct. Um, this is what we're going to be getting into right off the bat, and I'm super excited. First things first, though, we need to break a tree because we need to get a crafting table. That's our first quest, right? So to pop that there, there we go, and make ourselves a crafting table. And uh, the good part about this is this is going to grant us a bed and some torches, uh, which is going to be fantastic. Now, moving forward, we're going to need patterns. As you can see, we're going to need some sticks, some wood. So I've got a little bit of regular wood farming to do. Hey, hey. You, yeah, you right there. H have you subscribed? H have you? If you have it, now would be a great time to do it. Come on, I know you want to click the subscribe button. All, all right, I I'll leave you alone about it. Now on my mini map, I noticed there was something over here. So you can hit M to open up your map, but there is a structure over here that I think is worth checking out and exploring. I'm completely out of, uh, of food. So I definitely need to find some food quickly. <laughs> Um, hopefully we can grab, it looks like there's some, uh, some pumpkin over there. Maybe we can grab some pumpkin. Maybe there's a chicken nearby that'll drop some eggs, or maybe we'll find some sort of food inside of this structure. Hopefully there's no bad guys. Cause I am pretty naked at the moment. I have no gear on me. Um, yeah, things could go badly here. This looks like somebody lived here at some point. There's rail tracks that lead directly up to the house. Like... There's an old abandoned railway that was here at some point, but it's definitely decrepit and gone now. I, I wouldn't think there'd be food at the railway. Interestingly enough, there's a beer mug. There's water that leads down here. Oh, and there is a chest. Oh, so there's a flare, some cobble right away, and a pickaxe in here? Well, that was convenient. And there's some crate. There's creates with andesite compound and some basic create materials like some cogwheels. Oh, and bread. Oh, thank God there's bread. I needed this. Oh, the saturation. I feel so much better now. Oh my goodness. Yes, there's a, there's even a tinker station over here. There's some cabbage leaves and cabbage. 
Oh, there's more. Ooh, there's a cookie and a leather tunic. Oh my gosh, what a great way to start this. Look at this cute little cabin. This is fantastic. Um, I'm gonna definitely take the station if I can. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and break that because we're gonna need the Tinker Station to progress through the quests. This little area is very cool looking though. Definitely loving the aesthetic here. Is there more? It looks like there's a little bit more of the building over here as well. Or what used to be part of the train station. This is pretty cool. Ah, oh, and there looks to be like a little tent camping area over here. And a well... That leads down into some water. I'm just... Unsure if I should drop down into that or not. Probably not. I should probably stick to just what I know here. Uh, maybe adventure into that later. Oh no! It looks like whoever did live here, they left their doggo! Look, it even has goggles! Maybe it's his prior owner's goggles that somehow deceased or... Uh, no telling, it's completely gone from this area. Now looking off into the distance, I think this is going to be fantastic. This is a nice flat area which is going to be super useful for getting into the create mod. But we also have this fantastic forest that's right next just ready to be deforested because we're going to need tons of wood. I definitely think hunkering down in the old abandoned, uh, yeah, abandoned area is probably a good idea. Oh man, there's even more goodies. I think this will be a great idea to stay here just for a few nights so we can get everything together and also maintain some sort of safety through the night. There's even a little mine shaft started down here and we definitely slayed our first mob. Oh my, there's a mine shaft built into this area. Oh, it doesn't get any nicer than this. There's even coal, direct access to coal. And a straight up mine shaft with mines ready to go. Oh, this is fantastic, except for there's danger. I'm running, I'm running. I do, I, I'm sorry I killed your friends. I'm so sorry. So I need to get started with the Tinkers. Of course, I'm gonna to refer to it as Tinkers uh, for right now, but we need to craft ourselves some sticks and some planks. And we're gonna use these to make crafting patterns. Now these patterns are gonna be utilized for some other things. We're gonna to need to make ourselves this, which is gonna be a Tinker's station, which is, we technically have a Tinker station, but I'm making another one for the, uh, the quest. And then we're gonna need this, which is called a part builder. Um, all of this is gonna be used to make some very basic tools. So we have our station and part builder. I'm gonna go ahead and store this for later. Um, and inside here is how we actually build our tool. But right here is how we actually make the individual parts. So as you can see right here, all we need is to select the tool binding or material and we should be able to make this. So to make a very basic pickaxe uh, or axe or any tool that we're going to need, which I hope to make a few of them, um, I'm gonna make the head out of cobble. Uh, and so for example, a small ax, we can make that. And then we can also make a tinker's stone uh, head. And then the bindings are gonna be out of wood for both of these tools. And the tool handle is actually gonna be made out of wood. Such a simple tool to get started, but it's very, very necessary. And we can always upgrade these later uh, or even make better ones down the road. Of course, we do have a copper pickaxe, which is very nice to have gotten started with. Uh, but definitely not always guaranteed if you're starting out yourself. So here we go. We'll put this together and we have ourselves our first sort of basic tools. Uh, I should probably even make myself a basic sword as well. Um, so to do that, we'll also make ourselves a stone sword, which is going to be just a blade. And if you're wondering what it's requiring, as you can see, it requires two rods. Um, this one would be better if you had some cactus laying around or some flint or even some bone. Uh, could definitely work, but we're going to use just wood, just like we did it for everything else. And there we go. So, very basic tools to start with. And weapon. Uh, I don't have a shovel, because I don't really need a shovel that bad early on. But, we have everything we need. And, if we open this, we can get our rewards. Which is some food, and some nice things, some more books that are related to Tinker's Construct. Um, and moving forward, well, things really are going to start opening up. So you can see right here, we need to make ourselves a furnace. As you can see, the recipe does require some of uh, some iron or some sort of ore uh, to be able to make this. Um, and then we're also looking at just getting ores in general. 
Um, so I, I don't know if this just requires silk touch or it's, it's wanting the raw versions and it's just using the image, but it also mentions making travelers gear. And this is really what I want to get into. So to make ourselves travelers gear, oh, it's going to be fantastic to get our hands on because it sort of substitutes the early game enchanting system with something else uh, and allows you to add modifiers to this stuff. Um, but we are going to need to kill some cows, it looks like, probably even capture some cows, uh, and we're going to need copper ingots. So we're going to have to do some copper mining, and I did see some copper down in the mines. So with our newfound pick, uh, we should probably take some coal, make some torches. I think that would be a good idea. I have some coal that I mined up. Uh, make some torches and get ready to go. This is going to be uh, a fun journey, I think, <laughs> as we venture down into the mines. This is not a normal skeleton. He's got a gun. <laughs> oh, no. I wasn't expecting that. No. Hey, bro. Don't. He's shooting me. <laughs> what is even going on right now? Oh, my gosh. Oh, at least we got some loot out of that. I was not expecting a skeleton with a gun. <laughs> what even? I'm, I just love that we found this area. There's even ladders that take us down to lower levels that allow us to mine at different Y levels because, of course, there's there's different ore at different levels. And, and there's clay everywhere and stuff like that, which is just even better. This is a fantastic, fantastic little starter area. There's even more loot down here. I love finding those like little like loot stashes. May not be a lot of loot right off the bat, but just bread and things like that are fantastic because I need to eat. Oh, I definitely need to eat some food. So wandering through here, there's there's a spawner in here. What even? Oh, that's so nice. I wonder if this would be a, a way that we can automate. Maybe even use this for early game XP generation. But there is definitely a spawner right here. I wonder if there's more spawners, maybe more loot. There's definitely multiple layers. Oh my gosh, so much adventure to come. I'm super excited. Oh, this, is, this is super nice. Super, super nice. So my pick just broke, which means it's time to head back up and uh, repair this. And it's actually surprisingly easy to repair these tinker tools. I just need to go back to my tinker station and plop in, as you can see, some cobblestone and voila, we are repaired up. Now, of course, we can also make repair kits for on the go travel repair. And so if I'm mining more, I can actually just take these repair kits and do it. I just realized I got a makeshift pistol from killing one of the skeletons. And we do have a couple of copper bullets. So how does this work? It's just like it. Oh, that's so cool. It's just like a bow. But it's a pistol. Now learning the different ores, as you can see right here, it does tell you these ores, but it also says to break them. But if you click, I understand. Boop. There we go. We get ourselves a cake reward. I kind of need this. Um, and I'm assuming this place is down. Yes. Oh, and now we have. A nice little source of food for right now uh, when we return back to our home base. So in the quest moving forward, we need to make ourselves a furnace. And of course, we're going to need a furnace in order to get the traveler part done and make that gear. Um, so the furnace should be just some sort of raw ore crafted like so. And there we go. We get ourselves a furnace and a nice egg sandwich for doing this and some coal. Uh, let's see. Where would be a good place to uh, fit the furnace? How about right here? in the wall. Boop. There we go. We have a furnace. And it's just a regular furnace just been retextured. Uh, and uh, raw copper. We're going to have to be we're going to smelt all this uh, right off the bat. So while this is smelting and we have this going, we should go on the hunt for some cows for some quick food. I can also take out some salmon. I think this would be a pretty decent way to get some early, early food. It looks like, yeah, I managed to stumble upon another one of these little starter houses. So I guess they're a little bit more common than I was actually expecting. But that's great because we get ourselves another pickaxe and several more other starting goods. There's another house over here as well. This one looks a little bit larger. 
I mean, oh no, this is a, just another train like depot with more train tracks. Ah, and there's some cows. Just what I'm looking for. I'll just. Yep, don't ask how I got my other leather. <laughs> So I was thinking before I go back out to look for more cows and actually I, I should probably collect the cows, right? I should probably bring them back here and, and start the breeding process, but I need to plant wheat and you can't just craft a regular hoe. So I'm going to need to make myself a couple of different things. Uh, if the JEI or the, the REA gets in the way, you can hit control and O to make it disappear, uh, which is kind of cool. As you can see this right here, this is like a pick spade <laughs> sort of thing. Um, it, it looks like it can break uh, that, but it can also break dirt, which is a great mining tool. But I believe the mattock is what we actually need in order to do this. Um, so we need this little round thing right here. If you're wondering where that is, a round plate. Now I'll make this all out of stone. I've also gone ahead and made a comma. A comma is going to be used to auto harvest, like so we can right click and it'll harvest the plants and replant, which is fantastic. I don't know if there's an auto plant feature in here with your bare hands, but if not, there you go. Um, so the rest of it is going to be an axe head, which is also going to need to be stone. And then finally, just a tool rod, I believe. Right? It's just a tool rod. Tool rod. Very simple. And uh, this is going to allow us to hoe. And then this will allow us to reap our harvest. Very nice. So let's find a good spot to plant. I think right over here is probably a pretty good place. Yeah. So we can just plant along the water's edge for right now. Should definitely grab some wheat and bring them over. Yeah, it looks like we can just actually just harvest, which is kind of nice. So we technically don't need a comma, but a comma is a really nice thing to have. So that way we can shear with it. Oh, I love how the chickens move. Oh, this is hilarious. We've got to get some uh, farm animals started. So I'm going to grab some chickens. Managed to find some cows. I just need to... Get them back to the base. So while I'm still on the hunt for leather, even though I have some uh, some cows there, I still have to find some cows. I noticed on the map, there's another structure out in the distance, and this one looks interesting. Uh, maybe it's got some uh, early game create stuff in it. That would be pretty handy. But, I've got more cows to slaughter. Oh, there's something neat over here as well. A cool little statue. I think this was the statue that I remember seeing on the intro, the title screen. There's some blocks in here from Create, some gearboxes actually, that might be worth taking off of this. Yeah, definitely the cogs. But there's more than just that up here. There's a large cog that we should be able to get our hands on, hopefully. There's that, and I believe there's a gearbox. Yeah, just some free stuff right off the bat. I wonder if there's more inside here. Now, flywheels are more like decoration blocks now. They used to be more than decoration blocks, but there's still decoration here, and I think there's two of them on this structure. Uh, but off in the distance, uh, across the water is that structure we were looking at. And I see the windmill just slightly off in the distance. That might be a functioning windmill. There could be more create resources in this. Wait a minute. This is more than I was expecting. This is an entire area full of resources. I, I should move here. It's a full fledged village. <laughs> with an iron golem and everything. There's so many resources. Look at all the leather. Oh, this is a find. This is, there's a rapier. Oh my gosh. A sickle. We have this from, this is the, the Minecraft uh, dungeon weapons mod. Corn. Corn. Yes, there's even corn. Uh, okay. Tons of resources here. Cows already ready to go. Oh, this might this might be the place. The problem would be keeping our villagers safe. Keeping them safe from danger. And now the windmill up here. Is this a functioning windmill? Is there any create things in here? Doesn't seem to be, but 
There's copper blocks. Copper blocks just sitting here. Just okay, and some redstone. Very interesting. And uh very lucrative. Like there's a lot of good stuff here. Like right away we have stables for cows and sheep. Okay, okay, I'm I'm making the move. We this will be the base of operations starting at this point. This place is awesome. I'm I I'm, I love it. I love it so much. I have uh, some chests that are nice and organized here. I got all these nice and set up. Uh, there you go. And uh, over here is where I have um, all of the materials that I've been grinding for. And then of uh, then we have this chest. Yeah, very very nice. Very very nice. I've harvested already a lot of the crops that, as you can see here, and uh, got got my uh, chickens <laughs> prepped up as well. The crazy thing is, is these guys are ready for trade. So, I mean, all I have to do is just trade up with them and uh, we should be ready to rock and roll in emeralds uh, in no time. Now, upstairs, I noticed there's, there's, yeah, an iron helmet on this, on this frame. And it's a little, it's a little bit glitched out. Um, just so, just a little bit, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we could probably do something with this. I don't know, like smelt down the iron nuggets or something like that. Seems like all you get is iron nuggets. We'll, we'll probably save these helmets, uh, for something else, but wasn't expecting it to break into a million armor stands. <laughs> uh, there's a clock on the wall up here, and that could be useful later on. Definitely useful for mining when, to see what time of day it is. It's cool that you can just place the item on the wall. Uh, but now we have some uh, some upgraded armor, and uh, we are getting ourselves ready to go. I mean, we have a lot of the resources that we're going to be needing to move forward. Uh, it even comes with a blast furnace, uh, and as you can see, I'm smelting up some steak. And uh, I went ahead and placed my furnace in here. This is a fantastic place. I am going to pop in here, though, real quick. And let's see, we have even more goodies in here. I'm going to grab this copper. Now it is waxed, but I don't think that matters 100%. I think we can still break this down into its base form, or can we not? Oh, we can use an axe on it, right? To unwax? Uh, unwax it, right? There we go. So yes, we can unwax it. Just like that, and then we can get the extra copper out of here. Yes, yes, yes. And this will give us a bunch of copper. I'm also gonna grab the redstone here, which looks a little suspicious being inside this tower. Wonder what uh, mischievous things have gone on there for there to be uh, redstone, quote unquote. Down, down at the bottom of the uh, the windmill. Now, finding this village was fantastic because in the quest book, we are going to be moving into this section here uh, and moving forward and getting into the create mod itself very, very soon. And uh, to get into create, well, just looking at the water wheel, we're going to need a few things such as bronze. Bronze, to be able to get this, requires a smithing table, right? And so we need copper and tin. And uh, the smithing table itself is very, very easy to make, but there's already one right here. How useful is that? So it just started to rain on me, but I was able to finish up the section here by getting some clay out in the water and some andesite. And that unlocked a new section, the andesite world. And this is going to bring us into create, yes. And it says, welcome to create, going beyond above which i believe is a reference to the create mod pack create above and beyond uh so this is quite hilarious um but it's going to take us step by step into an easy way to get materials such as this right here we'll go ahead and click that and accept we'll get some experience but this right here is how to make easy andesite so it talks about using double compressed andesite and uh I'm assuming we place this under. So when flowing lava touches water over double compressed andesite, it will have one in six chance to spawn andesite and will spawn cobblestone 
uh, the rest of the time. Better than digging it out. And so later on, we can create a, a way to uh, to automate the production of andesite. That is going to be probably one of the the uh, the eventual goals, eventual goals for sure. There's a lot of things we're going to need to automate. Uh, this looks like it's pushing us into grout, uh, which will get us further into tinkers and get better tools. So mining becomes a lot easier. Ah, things are looking good and I'm excited to see what this pack has to offer down the line. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's time to wrap things up. And uh, I think this was a really good sort of closing point for today's episode. Uh, if you would, be sure to click that subscribe button. Also, give this video a huge thumbs up and comment down below what, were your, what was your favorite part of today's episode. And uh, of course, I would love to read your comments and uh, I will be in the comments when this video goes live. Um, and uh, yeah, I would love to see you and, uh, and like your, uh, you guys' comments. Now, of course, for those of you who are interested, I do have a Discord. You can join me at discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And I also live stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. Those are some great places that you can follow me. All of the links are down in the description below if you want an easy way to get to them. Now, at the end of every video, I sort of have a ritual where I place a sign and I think the supporter of today's video. And when I say supporter, it's those who have gone a little bit extra and have, tr have decided to support this content financially, whether that is via uh, Patreon or whether that's via Discord Premium, which is a really cool new service, or even the new YouTube members. There is now a join button that is just down below next to the subscribe button. Uh, and it is a great way to uh, become a supporter. Um, and uh, I just recently turned it on. So if you wouldn't mind checking that out, you do get awesome perks and all the perks are managed on Discord. So whether you're supporting on Twitch or Discord or Patreon or now YouTube uh, with the members, you get access to all of the same stuff, all curated through the Discord, including supporter servers and all that fun stuff. And with that all being said, I'm going to give a huge thanks to Super Pig over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and continuing to support. Thank you so much i hope you enjoy those sub servers and uh guys like i said if you're interested discord.gg forward slash chosen architect is a great way to just join the community you don't have to support or anything you can just join hang out ask questions find people to play with we have a member account of over twenty six thousand. it is pretty crazy and it's all thanks to you guys so i hope you enjoyed today's video i'll see you of course guys in the next one and as always thanks for watching